Nick, man, having watched you at Tulane, everybody's got a different story, but you didn't have a whole ton of big-time recruiting people after you. But you came in and you were a difference maker. Man, you got to take great pride in that. And what an unbelievable season you were a big part of because you were – it was either you or Dorian. Y'all making major plays each and every week. Yes, sir, man. Uh, it's really just a blessing to just see everybody get their opportunity going forward and get their opportunity to, you know, take their dreams. To have um, 11 guys, uh, 10 out of 11 guys get their opportunity to get their foot in the door with the NFL is amazing. And it's just a true testament, you know, all the hard work that we put in last year in the off season, And, you know, going out there and being Cotton Bowl champs and being AAC champs and, you know, just to see everything unfold is a true, true blessing. And we're just blessed. And I'm happy for all of my teammates that, that signed or, you know, got drafted and got that opportunity to go to the next level. Now, uh, Nick, how ecstatic you are uh, because – here, uh, you know about the Houdat Nation, you're all in Saints, and, but um, your opportunity to sign with Saints and, um, and probably doing whatever it would take uh, to make the roster and contribute. Have they talked to you about uh, special teams? Because I know you can tackle. Most definitely. You know, coming from Tulane, you know, that was something that Coach Chris definitely implemented. It's all about like, being able to, you know, play on special teams. So unless you were a quarterback or offensive lineman, you know, you were on special teams. Even if all, uh, the D linemen, you know, were, you know, still protected for punt team. So, you know, coming from Tulane, I have 776 uh, snaps of my college football career have been on special teams. Um, that's something that I take pride in. You know, I look at punt and kickoff as another rep on defense and, you know, look at, you know, the punt return team and kickoff return team as another opportunity to make a play and help change the game. So, you know, I'm definitely uh, grateful for the opportunity and we'll be looking forward to working with Coach Rizzi and being on all four core special teams for the Saints. When you look at uh, when you're going to come OTAs and you got mini camp and all that, first impressions, what have you said, well, uh, I'm really confident that I could do this at a high level? Or, or what do I have to get better at? Because, you know, at high school, you go to college, you go to pros, and it's all a progression. The first thing I want to do is become more of a student of the game. You know, at the college level, you know, I, I maxed out and tried to, you know, find every way to get better. And I feel like as long as you're still playing, as long as you still have the opportunity to play the game of football, you know, there's always something you can learn. So coming into a great room under Coach Hodges and being able to look at guys like Demario Davis and Jonathan Abram, which who also played at Jones College, and then looking at guys like Cameron Jordan, you know, it's just a, a, a team full of talent, a team full of guys that I can come in and learn from. Um, Coach Rizzi is a great special teams coordinator and has been doing, you know, a phenomenal job in the NFL. And I just feel like that's my one thing that I plan to do is just be a sponge and soak up so much information and continue to have an uh, expanding football IQ and continue to be a student of the game because I feel like there's always something I can learn from somebody. So just really looking forward to, you know, just growing my development, my football IQ, and just continuing to help that be my mental edge. Playing the run, you've done a great job there. Okay, you're not the biggest cat in the world, and we're not stretching things with that. But the pass cover part of the game is so big in the NFL. Is that something you put a priority on in the offseason? Because we can't put you on a rack. We can't get you bigger. Okay, can we can't stretch you to make you taller. We can't make your arms longer. But you can work on your craft. And the way the NFL is built, yeah, you have to stop the run. But you got to cover. And is that something right. you spend a lot of time on? Most definitely. The NFL is definitely a passing league. Um, and that's something that I feel like I am prepared for and have been, you know, working to fine-tune. Tulane did a great job, you know, being up under Coach Mike Moose and Coach Chris Hampton. We ran a lot of different schemes, a lot of different coverages from quarters to cover three uh, spot dropping to cover three mats. So I have a very, very uh, great intelligence and awareness for different zone concepts and man concepts. You know, a lot of times me and Dorian will have to cover tight ends, um, even cover slots in, in certain defenses and running backs out the backfield. So I definitely have an experience of, of doing that. That, um, and have production uh, of doing that as well with uh, pass deflections. So I have been working on my hands so I can turn those, you know, pass deflections into interceptions going forward. Um, but, yeah, overall, I've just been, you know, trying to uh, get my quickness down, get my lateral quickness down, you know, my eyes. I've been working with Cincinnati Bengals safety uh, now, <laughs> Larry Brooks. You know, he's been my roommate, and me and him have been working a lot of different defensive 
uh, back techniques as far as covering man-to-man and zone dropping and things like that. Just trying to be a sponge not only mentally but also physically and just add more things to my toolbox that way I can be able to be in a great position to battle and make the 53-man roster. So, Nick, what have they uh, told you? Okay, now, uh, you know, you have the drive, you have free agents. Is it like pretty much, uh, okay, uh, now uh, you're New Orleans Saint and you get the off-season training program, you know, with OTAs and you got minicamp. That, that's your lifestyle now. Uh, you are a pro, and uh, all the training you're going to do in the competition there, is that something that they've dialed in with you and that what they expect with you week in and week out? Yeah, most definitely. They just, you know, have talked to me about, you know, continuing to develop me as a linebacker. And also, you know, like you said, beginning of the call, just being that guy that can play all four core special teams. Um, You know, I've been uh, talking to Coach Hodges and and Coach Rizzi about my role on defense. You know, uh, when I went and worked out for the local day, they had me do some things uh, on the offensive side of the ball with a uh, fullback and just like you said, you know, trying to be that blue collar guy that can do whatever, you know, the, uh, the team needs from me. You know, I'm, I'm really a team first type of guy. Um, that's how we were able to turn things around at Tulane. Um, and that's just my mentality. That's just, you know, who I am. So I'm just prepared to do anything I can to help the team out and make the team better. Nick, uh, kind of walk us through the process of, of day three. Uh, and was it a tough decision to sign with the Saints you had some options but kind of what you went through on day three of the draft you're not real sure if some team would pick you or not maybe late but also the free agency process uh the draft definitely was a a different experience um it, it, it was stressful um but you know God made a way and God you know had me come to exactly where I needed to be um but waking up day three you know I had been talking to my agent and he was like okay you know uh, it's, it's a late round opportunity. You know, some teams may take you uh, from the fifth to the seventh. If it falls to free agency, we have a handful of options. And going into the draft initially, I had talked to up to 15 teams. So, you know, I was just, you know, looking forward to it. Didn't really know where I was going to end up. So uh, towards the end of the draft, I had been in heavy contact with the Seattle Seahawks. Um, and the Saints had reached out to my agent prior to the draft. And the Saints had always told me and been transparent um, and told me that they, you know, might – lose a couple picks towards the end of the draft but you know they wanted me there they wanted me to you know stay in New Orleans and be a New Orleans Saint so really just looking forward to that phone call so actually you know before the prior to the draft ending you know I thought I was going to be a Seahawk you know they didn't select me with their last pick in the seven I was like okay but you know still I had a great opportunity up there to you know go and be a Seattle Seahawk and then as soon as the draft ended you know got the call from Coach Hodges and you know they hit my agent up and I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a New Orleans Saint. You know, that's what that's what I wanted, and I was ecstatic. You know, the family was ecstatic. But, you know, that's where I wanted to be. You know, I felt like, you know, this was home for me. This has been my home for the past four years. I'm very well aware of the Saints facilities because we practice there, um, have great relationships with the coaching staff, um, had a great experience at the local day. That's, that's why I was comfortable. That's why I felt like I could be put in the best situation to make the 53-man roster. So when they called, it was a no-brainer. You know, it's time to, you know, be a New Orleans Saint. I, I just was like, okay, when when do I get there? When do I start working mini camp? Because I'm coming. Um, so I'm just really, really in a blessed situation and very thankful for those guys extending me this opportunity. Have you, uh, like, patterned your game after anyone and, and watching film? Who do you watch a lot of film of? I watch a lot of film uh, specifically of Devin White. You know, I feel like he's a phenomenal linebacker, very athletic. Um, not the biggest guy, but just the way he has the motor to go sideline to sideline and, and create havoc and make plays. And, you know, him also being a local guy from Louisiana um, and playing at LSU, you know, I watched him a lot. Um, and it's somebody that I do feel like I can mirror my game after. And actually, um, my representation with the Sam Mills jersey, on uh, the day three of the draft wasn't just for a show. I've actually, you know, looked up old clips of him and the way he played the game and the things he brought to the table. He was actually introduced to me when I first got to Tulane by, you know, his former te- teammate and my, you know, DB coach at Tulane, J.J. McCleskey. J.J. told me that I reminded him of Sam Mills. So I've been, you know, looking at his old clips and looking at the way he approached the game. And it's really get, given me the motivation to know that if he can do it, I can do it. You know, he's a Hall of Famer, a, a, a legend. 
the uh, field mouse for the New Orleans Saints. And I just know that, you know, I have that same opportunity. You know, he was an undrafted guy. I'm an undrafted guy. And definitely have the opportunity to come in and, and work hard. And, and that's the goal. That's the standard. So those are two linebackers that I really proud my game after and really, you know, looking forward to following those footsteps. Nick, we always want to hear you give the big shout out of the who that. So the floor is yours. Give us the big who that. Who that? Go Saints, oh. baby.